Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about something that I had a bevy of requests for. It's not a word you get to use often, and it's not a word I get to make puns out of ever, so I'm going to take full opportunity. What we're talking about today is Bevy, a new framework for the Rust programming language. I know a ton of people are absolutely ecstatic about the idea of using Rust for game development, but the ecosystem, well, probably isn't really there yet. Uh, now, Rust itself, if you don't know, it is a language that is really trying to basically be C++ with a lot of the faults fixed. And in a lot of ways, they've actually managed it. You can kind of get the performance you would expect from low-level tooling in something like C++, but without the, you know, 40-year-old build system and all of the other faults that come with C++ development. If you're interested, Rust is available at rust-lang.org. And at the same time, I did a video sometime back about Rust for game development. I will link that with the linked article down below because it, in addition to kind of going through some of the frameworks that are available for Rust, uh, it actually also has a bit of a uh, tutorial on uh, how to get your development environment up and set, running, and then also using Visual Studio Code, Rust, and the Piston game engine to get started using Rust. That video is available there. It's linked in that article. So if you want Want to check that out. But what we are talking about today is Bevy. Now, when I did this article, when I did this video, to be honest, I found one recurring fault with Rust. And it's nothing to do really with the Rust programming language. It's to do with the ecosystem around Rust. And that is, it's needlessly complicated. Every framework I looked at minus one, which I think the minus one was actually Piston, was just painfully over-engineered. It was sort of like what Java used to be like in the late 90s, early 2000s. It's because people have a new toy. They want to use all of the tricks of that language, and they're not doing it for ways that make programmer productivity any better. They're doing it because they can, and trying to learn some of these frameworks is like trying to smash your head through a brick wall, and that's where Bevy comes in. And the, the tagline is 100% accurately. A refreshingly simple data-oriented game engine built in Rust, free and open source forever. Now, I would argue engine is, is technically a framework. You don't getting any kind of level editors or anything like that, but you are getting a pretty comprehensive set of tools there. Um, so we're going to take a look at what Bevy is all about. Obviously, this is an open source project. Almost everything in the Rust ecosystem is, and that is definitely a nice thing to see. Uh, as mentioned earlier on, this is a data-driven engine, but the big part for me, and this is, again, missing thing in the Rust ecosystem, refreshingly simple. You don't have to dig through 100 million things to go with, oh, isn't that clever? I don't want clever. I want good. And that's what Bevy provides. Um, so what we've got here, data-driven. It's got its own ECS or entity component system, the Bevy ECS, a custom entity component system. It's, again, keywords, magic words, simple. I like that. Uh, fast, multiply parallel and cache friendly. So you can have a lot of multiple threads working on the same sets of data without having a bunch of race conditions and locks going on. And it is capable. You've got queries, global resources, local resources, change detection, lock parallel, schedule, or again, so you can have multiple tasks all kind of working on the same sets of data at the same time. And again, to summarize my favorite thing, it's simple. Components are Rust structs, systems are Rust functions. That is pretty straightforward. We've got 2D and 3D with this framework slash engine. Um, the 2D features sprite sheets, dynamic texture, atlases, cameras, textures, and materials. Uh, it's extensible with custom shaders, materials, and render pipelines. Uh, it's built on top of Bevy's render graph. And then 3D, uh, which is also built on top of Bevy's render graph. Uh, we've got much of the same features here, custom shaders, materials, and render pipelines. And But this one features lights, cameras, meshes, textures, materials, GLTF loading. So you can actually bring in your content from something like Blender, Max, or Maya using the GLTF format. Uh, the render graph, this is again the graphics layer that both 3D and 2D renderers are built on top of. Uh, parallel render graphics are automatically rendered in parallel. That goes nicely with the ECS for uh, scaling up across multiple CPUs and GPUs potentially. Modular, build com um, composable and reusable render logic using render graph nodes. And the back end is agnostic. It's not tied to a specific graphics API. So if you want to use Vulkan on the back end or DirectX on the back end or OpenGL on the back end, or if for some weird reason you want to use Metal on the back end, you potentially could. Now, it doesn't necessarily say that they're providing those back ends, but the render graph provides that abstraction layer between those back ends. And that gives us the multi-cross-platform, the multi-platform support cross-platform here, which right now we have Windows, Mac OS, and Linux support with Android, iOS, and web all on the way. This is where it kind of gets impressive in terms of features for a newer framework. We've got 
a UI system on top. This is built on top of their ECS renderer and scene plugins. A uh, bit of a spoiler, there's a scene plugin. We'll get to that in just a second. This is a commonly missing feature, so it's nice that it's there. It's a UI layer, uh, can compose UIs dynamically in code or declaratively using the Bevy scene format. So the nice thing is with this stuff, the scene format, the UI layer, the ECS approach, etc., we will no doubt see tooling built on top of that, which will move this from being a framework to an engine, in my mind. Uh, uses a familiar Flexbox model. If you're from the uh, CSS world, you'll know what that's all about, uh, to lay out your UIs. Basically, it's kind of like dividing your scene into sub boxes and you put things in each one of those boxes, a pretty straightforward and easy way to lay out UIs. Um, we got a scene system, so you can create, save, and load uh, entity component system worlds using Bevy scene system. Uh, Loading scenes, preserved entity IDs useful for saving games. Instancing uh, creates linked duplicates of scenes with new entity IDs. And you've got hot reloading support. So when they do have an editor, you'll be able to make changes directly in your level data and see it in your running code, which is definitely nice to see. Uh, we have uh, sound support, audio files. You can load in MP3 files as assets, play audio files using the audio output resource. Uh, hot reloading, kind of mentioned that a little bit with scenes. Uh, asset changes are immediately reflected in running Bevy apps. You can currently hot reload scenes textures and meshes so if you're updating the meshes being used boom they will update in your game as well and any asset type can ultimately be integrated so this is a tooling set that is perfect for tooling down the road or, or uh, as, as an sdk perfect for tooling down the road later on and we've got fast compile times you can expect as in 0.8 to 3 seconds uh with the fast compile configuration this is after your initial compil compilation which we'll see in a second and other Rust game issues would take 30 seconds to compile a single new line insertion. And of course, it is free and open source. 100% free, forever and always. Uh, open source under the permissive MIT license. No contracts, no licensing fees, and no sales cut. Nice thing is, you want to get started, there is the Bevy book, which walks you through how to do stuff, including how to get started, which we will see in just a second, and some of the details of what you need to know to work with it. And you're going to find the code is just remarkably straightforward, which is very, very, very refreshing. Because when you come to learn Rust, again, I like to learn things by creating a game or an, uh, something with it. And I always found Rust as a language isn't that complicated. But what people create with Rust always seems to be just overly complicated. And again, that's why I really appreciate Bevy. So if you want to check it out, it is open source. It is available up on GitHub. I will, of course, link this in the linked article. So don't worry about that URL. It is under the MIT license. Head on over here. MIT license, if you do not know, is excellent. You get commercial use, modification, distribution, private use, basically can't sue them. And if it blows your computer up, not their fault. And you got to keep the copyrights intact if you redistribute it. It's really straightforward. Uh, I'm probably my favorite framework license out there is the MIT license. So uh, I'm always happy to see it. It, it Apache, Zlib, those three are, are, are always nice to see. All right, so that is the basics of Rust, uh, sorry, of Bevy. You wanna see how to get started. It is actually really, really simple. Let's head on over to a command prompt. There's a couple things you need to have to get going. You need to have git. If you do that and you don't get an error, you've got git. Also, you need to have, okay, why are you off my screen? All right, there we go. You also need to have uh, Rust obviously installed. Um, if you can run the cargo command, which is the Rust package manager, it means that you've got it going. Otherwise, head on back to rust-lang.com, follow the installation instructions. It's a really simple uh, platform or, or uh, thing to get up and going, but do run the cargo command. If this runs, gives you anything other than an error, you are good to go. So now what we need to do is git clone and then that repository we just were at for um, GitHub. So it's github.com forward slash bevy engine forward slash bevy. And just paste that in. It's going to clone down all of the stuff. Oh, I didn't change directories. Oh, crap. All right. So that's in my, my root directory. Okay. Uh, so let's go into that right now. So we are now in that directory. And you just do a cargo dash dash. Oh, sorry. Cargo. And then run. And then we want to go ahead and run an example. If you're curious what the examples are, just do an explore. Uh, let's do examples. Like so. so we're going to open up the directory. So here are all the various different examples that ship with it. There's a good collection of them right here. Uh, 2D examples, 3D examples. A lot of them are pretty simple and minimalistic. So if you want to see the ECS in action, a lot of them are single file examples. This is probably one of the best ways to look other than the Bevy language. The big example they've got here is an Arkanoid, or sorry, a breakout clone available right there. Um, but you can also do simple window stuff, creating multiple windows, changing window settings, 2D examples, and so on. We'll run the game example because that's what their actual documentation starts you off doing. So again, back over to here, do a cargo run 
and then run the word example, and then just the name of the thing that you want to do. So what we're looking at here is game breakout. So what we're going to do here finally is just put the words breakout in. And now Cargo is going to resolve all of the various different dependencies that um, Bevy depends on. Uh, so you can see here, there, there's a fair number of them. First, it's going to you know do a straight out update. Uh, but then this is going to run for, for quite some time, to be honest. There's a fair number of dependencies that we've got to get and resolve. But the nice thing is, if you've ever worked in C++ land, you're going to appreciate having a package manager. This is, it works on the same lines as something like NuGet or or um, to a lesser degree CMake, but a heck of a lot easier. So it's gonna just go ahead, download all of the various different dependencies we've got. You can see here we have 130 crates to go through. A crate is basically a, a library um, in Rust terminology. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause it while it runs. Just to keep in mind, you only actually have to do this one time, which is nice to see. So I'll just pause and be right back. All right, so here we are coming to the end. There are 251 things to compile here. It's, it's a pretty short uh, compilation process on the whole, a couple of minutes tops. And I'll show you in a second. The second compilation is blisteringly fast. So here is your example. Um, oh, I have to give it focus. It's a simple Arkanoids clone. So basically, you know what you're dealing with. Very easy kind of starting example. But again, we have a ton of examples for various different things. I'll show you compiling another one of those in just a second. So... That's it. That's all it takes to get started. Now, if you want to go ahead and run that for a second time, you're going to find it's a lot faster. So here we are, second compilation and done. So uh, really, the big compilation is bringing in all of the things to require to build the Bevy engine itself. And even a couple of minutes to build an entire game engine is, is nothing to sneeze at. So there's one of the examples. So come here. Let's load up one of the 3D examples instead. So if you want to do that, so let's see, 3D underscore scene. We could do the exact same thing. Just change this to 3D underscore scene helps to spell it right there we go and run and then here we go we're compiling so we're compiling basically just that one file this time as opposed to the whole framework and there you go a full 3d scene example there are a few dozen examples to work from uh, so that is uh, definitely nice if you want to go in and check out the code for any things again they're all here in the examples folder so just go into the examples directory pick the one you're interested in it's so like so and i'll just open those up in visual studio code i'm not going to get into setting up the rust tool chain here again the other document I did did show you that but if you open up a rust file in something like visual studio code like so uh, if you don't automatically have it configured it's going to go oh this is rust would you like me to install the the rust language components um, and just let it do that stuff or watch that other video on setting up a tool chain but here you can see um, a lot of chaining going on uh, it does use an ECS system but what I love here again about this guy in general you see how easy it is to set up a 3d scene this is one of the first frameworks this and I think again the other one was piston but it's been a while that were just straightforward and I appreciate straight forward because again even though rust itself may be a beautiful language to work with when all of the libraries and frameworks out there are just kind of over engineered it's really frustrating to get started with and this one oops this one is by far and away the one that i recommend you check out uh, as a beginner but again i'm not huge in the rust ecosystem i'm actually going to probably use this to to you know explore into the world of Rust a little bit. Um, so if you have other recommendations or different recommendations for the channel, I definitely am interested in hearing them. But Bevy, is, it ticks all the boxes. It's simple, it seems to be fast, it's nicely modular, um, and it's open source under the MIT license. So if you're interested in getting going, just head on over to rust-lang.org, get the Rust tool chain up and running. And then uh, if you want a little bit more detail on that, I will link that down below. But Bevy itself is available at bevyengine.org. There is a nice uh, set of learning materials here, uh, an API of how their framework itself works, and the Bevy book, again, walking you through everything you need to know to get up and started with Bevy. Again, highly recommended on my end, and I am highly recommending it for more than any other reason because of that. Refreshingly simple Please, more framework developers, I know you like playing with this widget or that widget or this ability or that shiny new toy, 
but at the end of the day, you're creating a tool that other people, mere mortals, are going to have to use. And if you write it in a way that mere mortals can understand, more mere mortals are going to use your project. And this is something that Bevy nailed. So I highly recommend it if you're looking to look into Rust and you want to look into Rust for game development, Bevy is a great place to start. Now, there are certain layers that are missing. This is an early framework. But if we head on back over to GitHub, you will notice something impressive. It is updated actively and quite often. And hopefully that keeps happening. And as the, the community grows, hopefully more and more people will get behind it. On the topic of community, uh, head on over here. You will notice that they do have a Discord server. I will link to that down below. So if you want to get in and up on Bevy, go check them out on Discord. Uh, it's a great looking project, especially if you are interested in the Rust language. And perhaps like me, you kind of found some of the, the existing stuff like, you know, just too clever by half. Again, a deja vu of early 2000s and Java where it was used as, you know, fourth year university project examples and it really showed. So Bevy, great job. Keep it simple and please keep that mantra going and I hope you the best of luck with your project. So if you listen to this and you're a Rust developer and I offended you with some of my comments, please please refute them. Please give me the alternatives that I should have checked out over what I did check out. Or if you are a Rust developer and you agree with me fully, well, I also like confirmation sometimes too. And if you're new to Rust, does Bevy excite you and does the Rust language itself excite you? Uh, let me know what you think. Now, unfortunately, Rust got a bit of a bad news uh, just a few days ago in that uh, Firefox or Mozilla, Mozilla being the um, benefactor of the Rust project, are laying off 250 people and are focusing on the projects that make money. And this is a little uh, sad because they're focusing in areas like Pocket VPN, other privacy projects, and so on that you know go into Firefox or Firezilla or their other products right there. So a quarter of their workflows is getting nuked from Orbit. You kind of get a little worried because, again, one of their projects is Rust. Fortunately, uh, the Rust team has come out and said, uh, hit us badly, but here's how we will survive. So uh, Rust should survive. Uh, it's, its development may be a little iffy in the meantime because they did lose uh, some of the, the, you know, the support. A quarter of the workforce at Mozilla definitely hurts. And some of the developers there did lose their job. Uh, but hopefully there are enough people out there that are working on it. Uh, main sponsor of Rust was Mozilla, but uh, AWS, Microsoft, Azure, and Google Cloud have also come on board as sponsors. So don't worry too much. Rust should be just fine. But this, is, of course, is going to be at least a temporary setback for them. Uh, but hopefully not a huge hiccup. But uh, let me know what you think of the whole thing in general and the sad news I decided to throw in there at the end. And yeah, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.